capacity building in development, it's not a new topic. It's uh, a topic that have created a lot of headaches and despite of the intervention we have made in development, it still is a fundamental issue. What is capacity and how to create capacity in a sustainable way? Of course we are talking about human capacity, we are talking about the human factor. Either individuals, like creating uh, engineers, or as a collective, you know, how a particular society can raise the bar in its social consciousness so that things can happen in the right way. I must say that my great imperative is to find a balance between uh, knowledge, con content, life and container and I think now most of it it's content there's so much content in my life in your life that we don't know what to do with it and this is the great challenge of the Aquarian age that actually you have more knowledge than you want I mean you go to Google and you put any word in Google human rights sustainable development capacity building you know, market, you know, any word, and, and Google will give you thousands of citations as to what to do with that word. So we don't have a crisis of content as we used to have, you know, 50 years or 100 years ago. So how do we create this balance between content and container? And I think I see capacity building as the means, the instrument, the practices that we have to go through and the programs to expand the container. And here the container is two or three folds. One is the human container. And we have done little for that. You know, we have done more on the second container, which is organizational container. How to make larger universities, uh, better technology for information transfer. And then we have community container, which is how to create institutional capacity at the local level. And I believe that they are interconnected and we are not going to be able to expand, for example, the capacity of communities in a sustainable way if we do not create individual capacity at the human level. I think people are fighting sometimes for issues that, you know, there is not enough information to really fight, but they are, they are already fighting. Uh, this demands several shifts. The first shift is that capacity and sustainable capacity has to be either a variable or the objective function of a given project or a given program or a given plan or a given exercise at the national level or the local level. In the past, institutional capacity was not part of the dialogue, so institutional capacity was violated. How it was violated, for example, you bring tractors that are 2011 to an area where nobody talked to the farmer, nobody, nobody taught them how to deal with these tractors. And this tractor is not just a matter of driving them or, or being mechanics of the tractor, but the impacts it had on, on the communities by saving labor, by creating unemployment, by creating a new social structure, you know, those who have tractors, those who don't have tractors, etc., etc. There are tremendous impact of, of technological change that were not really embedded into the rhythm, into the timing, into the melody of that society. So institutional capacity was violated and gave rise to many institutional capacity building projects. So it was like a business, let's break down the institutional system to have projects that will build it up. I think now we need to reverse this. I think we need to bring sustainable capacity as an essential ingredient before we do anything else and, and and the analysis just the analysis of what type of institutional capacity is needed and how sustainable it should be before we bring programs will be the key to the success of the program i remember in my last uh, years of my career i even found out that communications as a as an activity became pre to any project I was involved. In other words, we will bring journalists, anthropologists, and all communication specialists 
to try to gather information on whether the community will be even interested in that project, whether the community will accept the project, or how this project will actually impact on their daily lives. And this was fundamental in the success of the project, to have a period of conversation, of communication, of dialogue on institutional capacity, on sustainable capacity, through communication at the time. So I would say that there is no success in development if there is no sustainable capacity. And so let's not keep breaking down the capacity that exists or changing it, substituting it by a Western way of understanding of capacity. So if you go to Vietnam, the first thing you need to do is to understand what they have as capacity and maybe it's not the material side, maybe the human side, maybe the spiritual side, maybe the tradition side, maybe the culture side, maybe the family side, I do not know. But clearly the way a family in Vietnam works in business is very different from a family work in Latin America. So uh, you see many, many Chinese stores also in Latin America now that the whole family works there. You know, the, it's all integrated. The grandparents take care of the children at home, so they don't break down that capacity. Uh, the, 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 the youngers are, are selling and, and taking care of the store. And, and so there is some balance to avoid the breakdown of capacity. While in our societies, we're breaking the family down. Not only the husband has to work, the wife has to work, the children have to work because of economic conditions. So the family as an institution breaks down and then you see that in the longer term they don't have any more business you know they become actually uh, proletariats of the system so in sum uh, when we talk about sustainable institution building sustainable capacity we are talking about how to expand the container before we throw things to this container it's like having a cup of tea of this size and putting two liters of water in it it's just not going to hold it so whether we boil less water or we expand the size of the cup and both aspects of it are part of the discussion on sustainable capacity so let's have sustainable capacity as a central issue of socioeconomic development